Hi, welcome back to this episode of Office of the Last Hour. My name is Liz McGee, and we are going to go back down the tree of life. And we are, I'm going to kind of unpack the Sephiroth understanding of uh, the Sephiroth called Yesod. All right, and uh, it is the second from the last. It is actually the, the, the closest Sephirothic emanation from us coming from the heavens, from the invisible, from the heavens. It's what it's called, all right? The inner workings of, which is really the inner workings of our soul uh, and before it comes into manifestation. And it's huge. There are so many mysteries. And again, mystery isn't something you can never understand. You're supposed to dig deep and solve these mysteries. That is what Yahweh wants. That is what he's trying to draw his children into in maturity, to deeply, when you seek him with all your heart. Some of this stuff is really deep. Oh my gosh. Like, yes, so. So I was talking last week. I wanted to say, you know, obviously, who <laughs> this week we just lived through, uh, the world's pretty crazy and it's getting crazier by the moment. This is no surpri surprise to the elect. We know that this is the end of the age. We know that there are forces in operation that is bringing <clears throat> a harvest to, 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 to fruition. I mean, this is one of the archetypal images that is totally throughout Torah. You can't escape it. But Yeshua said, you know, you will know a tree by its fruit, all right? And I don't think we really uh, spend, have enough understanding of the depth of what he's saying. You know, a good tree produces good fruit, a bad tree, bad fruit. It's all in the context of, quote unquote, I was talking about last week, of Midos, of good character, all right? Yahweh has good character, all right? That is what he is. He is the epitome of good character, all right? Now, he has made many beings that have free will, okay, and that's part of the story. But um, when you get to Yesod, you have to understand, this is where now we are, we have drawn from all the, the emanative, the sephirothic, and this is what, um, all of the information, everything, if you were going to build something, right, let's just say, you know, you're going to build and you got everything ready now you got your plans you got all your materials you got your job site picked out you own the land you got all your permits you are ready to go and actually one of the key uh one of the code words for yes so uh, is foundation because usually the first thing when you're going to lay a new building is you kind of go in you have this whole ceremony and you lay quote unquote the foundation stuff you know or or you know you take the shovel with the first first bit of dirt and you put a foundation stone in it. But it's so literal what they're doing because stone is a word, again, code, that represents in, in one of its archetypal meanings, um, DNA. Like it, it, stones are like, think of the letters because they represent the letters, the sequence, what they form number sequences and all sorts of relationships when they come together. And that, that code, when it is combined as I'll show you, with the light, and then it, it comes through yes so sort of quote unquote a birth canal all right and then boom we have something and and then in pretty quickly that it's a recognizable something all right there is a there's a process for procreation that everything follows all right now so when i said that that one of the words we said is foundation and it's a foundational understanding because this is a very important place and this is a very you know, when they talk about the fallen angels and negative energies and how it was cast down and this whole concept of like a lower, there, the lower negative energies, the, 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 the demonic realms, the, the darkness, the things that we fight against is in the lower realms, all right? This is, it's right around Yesod, Netzachod, and Melchod. There, this is where the whole big um, <clears throat> real war is going on. And I'm going to, I can show this more and more. But anyways, one of the things that the fallen angels, you understand, have taught mankind. See, we're coming to an end of the age and there's going to be fruit and your fruit is either going to be good or it's going to be bad. And that's going to have a lot that's going to determine what your or origination is, what, let's say, who planted you, what tree you're coming from. You know, there's so many ramifications to this. I don't have time to like kind of totally flush it out. But the wicked, we know that there's a wicked seed line amongst mankind. The point with Cain, the story of Cain, um, Eve and Adam and the Nakash in the garden is all about the Sephiroth. Right? Now, it, it, it would take, there's so many levels, I can't really, but trust me on that one, all right? 
but <clears throat> because immediately when Cain was born and started to act out his uh, his emotions, right, or his mind, he had evil fruit. I mean, it, it was very obvious. And this, if you read, oh, I just love to read broadly and deeply because you get so much information. Believe it or not, scattered all over the the the, the tour, uh, Judah has kept incredible, accurate information. All right, historically, but. So when you read broadly, you can pick up so many, so much information. But my point is, these fallen angels obviously taught mankind. This is the storyline you get from Enoch. That they taught mankind wicked behaviors. It didn't just stop end with Cain. They that was sort of the first Cain came with all his friends, so to speak. You know, this this whole race, the Kosh, it wasn't just that one the Kosh that that this this entered, this brought Adam down to the world of all of these, uh, these they're called beasts, it's Nakash, this level of energetic or of, ener of living entity, all right? So, but they, this is where the storyline comes that we were taught art of warfare. The four things, let's see, the, 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 the Essenes kind of put it in three categories. A lot of, you know, you can pull out four categories of totally wicked behavior that we have never been able to rid ourselves of 100%. And that's what the battle is in humankind, right? It's individually, in, in our homes, our marriages, with our kids, in our towns, in our city, in our government, oh my gosh, in our world today, is an act of warfare. I mean, it's quite obvious that, that, that the level and that it's such a lucrative business, it has its tentacles into such deep, you talk about a deep, a deep state, so to speak, the, the, the tentacles of, of, you know, the military industrial complex and, and what warfare provides for this level of wickedness. Oh. And then you have the art of beauty and seduction. They said, this is really, this is again where yes, so gets in because this is the concept. This is why women, there's a connection between, you know, allurement, uh, the art of beauty and seduction going both ways. There's a way, you know, when she looked at the fruit and it was beautiful and it was good to the taste. There is a, a level of, Yahweh wants us to enjoy. Hey, it, it, procreation is supposed to be under a godly heaven with full intent. It's supposed to be one of those beautiful things, the beautiful acts that a man, a, a man or woman can do, right? It's totally, totally, but the flip side is, if it's done in, in, in the lower animal nature of pure lust without, without the individual, <coughs> you know, to supply a need, like a craven, uh, it's so hard to keep it simple. The art of beauty, in other words, you can heighten. The heart, point of beauty and seduction is you can heighten these negative energy so strongly around a person amping up their aura that it's almost hard it's like very hard to um to to resist that temptation see this is what 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 like 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 passions get so heated we just saw this week where, where two nations we could have world war three in a heartbeat because the structure's in place the button is there and we have everything forcing us trying to pour into this mode of behavior this is where, because we are in the God of this world, has so many ways in which to amp up his signals, I guess, so that we would act on it. The secrets of witchcraft, the powers of nature, and the secrets of science. And we have to really take this stuff very seriously because they are using so much information that really we can figure out is ours if it was used from the good intention, like, like, you know, get rid of the oil, have free energy. It's out there to have a totally just uh, world where everyone can have access to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But because of these, this grid that's over us, of these fallen angels and, and of their tentacles in every inch of our, which is getting worse and worse. They're like choking <laughs> the righteous today in a literal way. But let me just give you an example, because it's taken me years to figure out, okay, what is up with two golden calves, right? I mean, this is what gets me. When you, when you tell these stories over and over to intelligent people at a kindergarten level, the intelligent mind is, you know, and they don't have every right to finally it's someone just check out. And unfortunately, that's what's happened so much in that with, that is where Satan has so much of the, the, our generation, our younger generations in today. 
because most even most people do not have the depth of the esoteric, the hidden understandings, what's going on behind the scenes to give people a very legitimate and satisfying answer. All right, and you're only going to find it in in this is what it's point in the in the Kabbalah because it's it that's its whole that's its whole point to house all of the understandings, the deep mature understandings of wise as serpent and harmless as a dove. But let me say this: the, so the two of you has always annoyed me because what's the big deal? They make you know it, it just. It's like what is the big deal? It just doesn't sound that bad. You it's hard to wrap your mind around it, but. When you, when you combine a real, let's say, what would we call this, a perfect storm of Satan, when he really has, is making moves to entrap be the Israelites or, you know, many nations in his plots, he has a lot at his disposal, but one of them, the powers of nature and secrets of science, the golden calves is what they can probably tell now, you've seen on, and if you have it, you got to Google it because it's incredible, this new technology where they can, I don't know how they do it, whatever, it, 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 like out of nowhere, they are able to project a 3D image. Okay, so you can see it on YouTube, like this whale, there's a huge audience, people are sitting in a, what do you call it, like a, like a gym, a huge gym, and all of a sudden, out of the floor of the gym, they, they, this whale just comes up out of nowhere, full waves and everything, and it's as real as life and in your face, all right? And, and, and then it just dissolves back. I mean, it's really quite remarkable. Talk about, a, a, but if you were to animate that and you were able to make that speak and move and be directional, this is the level of technology that they, that the sorcerers, this is what the, uh, the Torah will tell you, the sorcerers that came out of Egypt uh, and mixed in with the, with the mixed multitude and turned the people this way. The two golden calves refers to um, uh, the calf, the bull, the Taurus. It's, 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 it's a zodiacal sign, that house. But what they were able to do was probably animate hugely. Who knows how big? Think of it, if you've seen it with coming out, animate to speak to probably change culture i mean who knows what level they could do but this is something that is um between magnetism when you understand and we understand the science today so much is going on we don't understand in we are electromagnetic beings that's how we're, we're wired there's a there's a connection electronic you know our electro network and our magnetic so that so the elements that we're made up of hydrogen and you know, all these things connect. There's a connect between um, <clears throat> some of the laws of nature, all right? So the, the fact that they could do this, and probably they were using uh, uh, electromagnetism and, and could make it move. I mean, this is incredible stuff. There's no reason in a million which to think that these people were not operating at levels that we think our technology today is so awesome. I mean, knowledge is always, remember, there's nothing new in the sun. The game is knowledge is lost, knowledge is found. Some generations are much more powerful in witchcraft. Some are much more holy, you know, and then there's everything in between. So it's very important to understand how the dead, the, the, <clears throat> and I say that because we need to understand, you need, we need to take seriously, this is the elect, we need to examine ourselves very seriously, the suffering of Yesod, and see where we are falling under this trap, be it, be it a warfare, seduction, witchcraft, and then using, allowing, which is happening today, but most people don't really understand uh, how they're using the powers of nature. Hey, weather warfare, look it up. You know, according to what I they have, they have, they can seed clouds and put those, those fires out in Australia. We have the technology to do that. Why aren't they doing that? Why are they trying to ramp up and scare and enslave and, and, and a whole continent of people? What's going on? See, we ah, we are little puppets in some huge galactic, really heavenly drama here, all right? The lower three heavens. So I want to say that because one of the, getting back to Yisod, because at this point now, when a man and a woman come together, it says, this is the whole point, and they shall be one, they shall produce one new entity. That's the point. All right, that's what they mean. This is the way the system is wired. So <clears throat> deep inside that DNA and that, that RNA, that relationship that could, is so many levels 
of operation for that fetus. And of course, man, you know, everybody, all the animals creation on the, on, on the food chain, you know, you're an, you're an animal, mineral, or vegetable, or you're an atomite human being and you different levels, but the human being has the, the greatest programs access that the world has ever seen. All right. But the point of the blood, see, this is what we have to understand about Yosef. And I have to say this because, you know, I've wondered a lot and now I feel like I have definitive answers because I'll tell you what, you can read in the Dead Sea Scrolls and in a couple other pseudographs. I've read a couple places. I don't have my witnesses right here, but it talks very clearly about abortion. Abortion is murder. Abortion's always been around. Okay. Every culture has figured out how, because they, they, part of it is because they're procreating. They're just, they're like animals. They're just, oh, this is, I mean, come on, people think about it. Children are a blessing. Children are supposed to be the greatest gift. That, and how far are we moved are we from this concept today? I mean, how many married couples get married today and really think that their crowning achievement, you know, is not going to be the, the world travel, the, the traveling they're going to get to do or their dogs or their careers. It's their children. The fact that they are, oh, we just lost. I won't even go into that. All right. And, and you know, hey, we're all guilty of this. Every woman today, you know, there's just so many on our watch and so many levels and we're all guilty of so many things. This is why mm, at the end of the age. But in the book of Jubilees, I have to tell you, this is about the blood. This is what I want to say. I've been over, there's three levels of the soul life. Very important to understand every Hebrew word, which one they're using, because it's extremely important to give you understanding. So you can rightly divide. You have to know what Hebrew word, what Hebrew letters, what you're dealing with. Okay, in the book of Jubilees, it says, take heed with blood. Take heed. Now, there's all this admonition in the Old Testament. Don't drink. You know, you're not supposed to drink um, meat sacrificed to idols that has the blood in it. It's a huge New Testament thing. It's all over, again, a lot of the Old Testament. Thing. You know, the, the Jews are very, you do not eat anything that has live blood in it. You drain the blood. Well, why? I mean, you know, you got to ask yourself, what's going on here? The blood is... You know, so this, let me finish this quote in Book of Jubilees. Take heed with blood, take much heed, buried in the earth, eat no blood, for it is the soul. Never eat blood. Now, you couldn't get it more clear than that, of course. And then we have a whole faction in the world today, right? They love to drink blood. What's going on? <laughs> all right. Why do they need blood? Why are we admonished never to drink the blood? All right. And it's always very clear that the, the life of the flesh is in the blood, which is in the soul. Now, what that means. When you know your nephish soul life, when you understand that it, it, it's a very, um, it's like a two-layered co um, couple programs in us, our lowest level nature, the most, the, our most animalistic nature. I mean, they know this, all right? You know, it's the way you get your hunger pains from. You know, the fact that you, you, know, you have to drink water, you have to breathe, all these automative systems that go on. Is that right? You know, that you don't even think about. I mean, there's so many systems that we're doing all the time. Our body's just sending out, you know, checks and balances and, and, you know, give me a reading on this and give me a reading on that to the brain. It's just amazing. It just all goes on all the time and we're totally unconscious. It's unconscious. We are not aware of it. But the flip side is there is the personality of that entity is in its blood, its first level personality. This is something I can't go into this. And this has to do with the whole concept of astrology and the Masra and what is, because there is an imprint going on in our soul that is imprinting down upon us it's our you know kind of our traits it's ingrained it's stamped on us okay what what and it has it's very deep it has a lot to do with a lot of factors but it this first level is in the blood but conversely it's also for animals so animals um there's so much where ancient cultures would drink blood this is especially before they go out before a fight a big they, they would drink the blood of you know, a ferocious, like a bear or something, because they were literally trying, and this, and this is, can happen. You can ingest some of that soul life. This is the whole thing with the vampire movies. People, this stuff isn't made up. We, we are electromagnetic beings, and our nephish soul life has a blood level in it that is <clears throat> not just organic material. It's organically wired to interface with <clears throat> other attributes out there. So, so this is why you, you see a lot of pain will, will want to drink blood or interface with very violent 
animals. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Or conversely, there because and this is the, the clean and the unclean and the food laws. There's so much to this. There is so much energy and there is so much, you know, we need to be protected from dark energy. Now, this our actions will totally protect us to a huge extent. All right. This is what in the Dead Sea Scrolls, they were always saying, you know, the three nets of Belial, who was Satan, and their way, uh, that he would always tempt the people and with great success, always, uh, with, with fornication, which is sexual immorality, which I have to clarify in a second, with riches, financial corruption. I mean, they got rid of the Jubilee so early on. They stopped doing the Shemitahs. The, 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 you know, the, the false weights and measures is all over the prophets in the Old Testament. I mean, they were financially corrupt. And today, in so many ways, I mean, let's point the finger, you know, point it at them. We're pointing three back at ourselves today. Nothing's changed. And then it's the pollution of the temple, which means the body, our body is the temple. So in it, these, these things that we do, these sexual sins, this, this financial corruption, and how we mar, and, and, and this has a lot to do with our body being the nephesh, what we eat, what our environment's like, what we're taking out of the soil. There's so much. All right, but in the blood, when you would say that abortion, you know, life is not at conception. Life is, you know, that has to take its breath. Well, that is not accurate. And today, science, and I can prove it Kabbalistically, that's what they've always been saying, but you can prove it scientifically. Every embryo <coughs> has fetal blood. Now, yes, the blood of the mother, because the baby systems aren't totally up and running yet. I mean, this is the whole point. This is the beauty of, he gives the, the embryo a support system. You know, the earth, the blood of the mother, it can live on, but it is developing and it has, because in the blood is the light, it has um, blood that is developing in, in working in all the systems. And that blood is unfolding the DNA code. I mean, maybe I'm not scientifically the best way at explaining all this, but theologically and theoretically and archetypally and what with the, the archives you see over and over in nature, this is the way it goes, all right? So we need to understand that um, <clears throat> the blood is, is a very, is specific for that species because it has very specific programs and connections in the way that the 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 blood which is when it says the, the light the light the inner because people don't say there's visible and invisible they don't understand how there's physicality but that physicality inside of it has energy and that energy is light all right and it, it, it has code and it it unfolds and it, it it has directions and it that's the brains of the operation so to speak it's just telling the lump of clay what to do all right so what I want to say is it's very important to understand life happens. You, when two people come together and create a new life and the nephish soul life is activated because this is, because it takes the male, all right, and this is the whole point of the male and the female. And it's so interesting. Uh, in this essence, the DNA is 24 and 24, it's been divided. You have to bring it together to get 48 to create, to have everything you need to make the next clone or the next and of the new the uh, progeny of that, all right? If that soul has been mixed, and this is what is in the storyline and especially in the garden, because the Nakash was a different species. He had a different nature to him, all right? He was from the left, lower, dark, demonic side, okay? He was a wicked entity. Yeah, one thing people don't understand, all wickedness was created. Every, all the wickedness that was ever gonna be, see, this is something we don't understand. This is why the ether is so, is there. All right, there's nothing, nothing is created out of nothing. It, everything in all creation is already out there somewhere. <laughs> it's so incredibly complex, but, oh, I hope you're sticking with me because it's just a lot, because I, we've lost this concept that when we procreate, we create souls and a huge responsibility. And this is why the texts were so, and when you read the Old Testament, not, not just the Old Testament, when you read a lot of the, the extra biblical literature and world religion literature and there's always these different species there's always different players it, it's i don't know how people they're not making it up the 
this is true, okay? And we, it's very important that, that like, well, so when, when, when the Nakash and Eve created a progeny and it was called the Canaanites, their seed, their fruit has been with us and in, in, it's like leaven has been getting into the seed of mankind huh, and producing all of this bad fruit in us. I just read, and, and I really love this, one of my favorites, I'll tell you, is the, a, a text called The Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs. And I just started reading it again because for, I was, you know, looking, wanted to make, refresh my mind and oh, I'm so glad I did. This, it's, it's beautiful. And, and, you know, again, there's no way, in my opinion, this text is not authentic. Pre-BC, uh, I mean, it was probably written, and again, it's very Enochian. So to me, it comes out of the literature. They know that they found a testament of Levi in the Dead Sea Scrolls. They've carbon dated it to like 150 to 200 years old. So we know that this patriarchal writings is an actual genre of writing within the Essenes, the Dead Sea Scrolls of Judah. All right, so it's a fact. And there have been fragments of the, uh, the Genza. What do they call that? Uh, there's a huge like kind of garbage dump in Egypt. They found tons. They found more fragments there. It was found in the 13th century in Latin. I mean, it has quite a documented history, but it's when people read it, it's very kind of kind of, kind of quote unquote Christian. But see, it's not really Christian. What it is to me, if the Nazarenes wrote this, which it, and kept up, it's they're just true believers. They get it. These are people who have true wisdom and understanding, and they understand the big picture the different messiahs, how it's going to go down through history. And that's why they're able to speak so prophetically into many generations. Uh, I see nothing about it. It's a beaut they're beaut And so in Levi, Judah, the Testament of Judah, I would at least read the four. You got to read the Testament of Judah, the Testament of Levi, the Testament of Joseph, and read the Testament of Ishakar because they kind of are the major players here. But in the Testament of Levi, uh, in the Testament of Judah, sexual immorality. I think they're great texts that I think every youth group, I mean, I think these for, for ethical behavior, this is what they say, everybody should read these. These are, these, and like the Dadachi, you know, choose you this day, who you're going to serve, light or darkness. Come on, people, let's, let's, let's delineate this. It's not rocket science. All right. So there is a verse out of, so Judah had a huge, all right, let me just, this wasn't a say. Judah has the story of Tamar. Judah, one of his big issues, and it talks about they have besetting sins. We all have besetting sins. We all have areas of our personality probably passed down generation that we really have to fight against, okay? And he had sexual sin with Tamar, remember the story. But this will tell you, and let's turn it around and look at it from the other side. What was Tamar doing, all right? And this is what I mean why there's so much information. Why was she sitting in the gates dressed like a harlot? I mean, it's just a very foreign, bizarre story to us, okay? But this is how wicked the Canaanites were, all right? They had a custom where if a, if a, a bride was to be a spouse, you know, she'd be married in a week, a full week before her wedding, she had to sit and probably at the temple, at the temple gates to the city entrance and be a prostitute and let any guy come along and just have her. I mean, is that going for how wicked and bizarre? I mean, that's the complete opposite of the concept of a bride we would have, who wants to preserve herself and be pure and holy. I mean, talk about, so here is Tamar um, donning this, in, in, you know, I can't give the whole machination of the story, donning this lifestyle and this clothing because, because of Jacob and the whole story to try to, um, but the point is, this is how wicked, and if you read about Sodom and Gomorrah and some of the information that has been kept by the rabbis in like the mission and some of these, the wickedness of these people, it, 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 it pales the mind. And in all throughout history, this is, we have to understand this, all right? There are, we have problem pockets. <laughs> now, I think today it's a, well, I shouldn't say, look, we do have problem pockets of people. It, it's in all the earth. It's not just, it's in every, this seed, this, it's like a, it's worked so that people, this level of wickedness can be in everybody, okay? It, it, it wasn't originally that 
in ev all the blood seeds, all the seeds, but it is in all of the bloodlines now. We're a mess. I mean, this is the whole point, all right? And, but praise Yeshua, he, he is the relief. He is the antidote. He is, for, he is the, <clears throat> uh, the best way to say, and I think it comes from the, the some Messianic promises in the Samaritan Pentateuch, where he is called the relief, all right? But this I'm going to read out of the uh, Testament of Levi. Uh, I think I'm, I mean, I'm in chapter five, Testament of Levi in verse 24, verse 25. And it says, in his priesthood, and this is, again, if you read, when you read a lot of these extra biblical texts, you begin to understand there's a lot of dialogue about, about the priesthood, about, about the Messiahship of Judah. You begin to understand and see that even they see the prophecy that, that, that this salvation happens in steps with different players at different points of history. And these scenes understand this. They were so hunkered down with truth. They were waiting with a pure bloodline. See, this is how seriously they took it they understood <laughs> and they protected their bloodline um for the messiah to come but this is why with them the whole idea of sexual purity and oh, because they get it all right and unfortunately it, it's hard it, we it's it's so foreign to our mind which shows to how far we have fallen but when you understand that souls are sons all right sons of elohim are sons all right because we're made in his image and his likeness <clears throat> or souls are you and 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 yes so pours ha, this concept of life hey comes through a channel and it really and it really is the best mind we're, we're in our mind we're allegorical here in a birth canal concept all right but if that if the soul life of that newly creating being soul life is coming is mingled this is the whole point and it it, it that's where the problem is all right and it's been a problem I can't go into too much depth, but let me say that this is what the adulterous wife, this is what they're trying, this is what all the allegories are getting at. If you mix with other lands belonging to other archon, and this or other gods, other dimensions, other realms, other entities, this is something very real, okay? And that's why when Eve intermingled with the Nakash, creating another life form, that was a mingle that was a hybrid that was the whole point and it immediately produced bad fruit all right but but beautiful to the storyline which most people miss and this is this is probably the the biggest takeaway from that whole story is that uh yahweh in the discussion tells the nakash tells look at or tells cain actually why didn't you come to me and talk about, do you think I don't know that you have a conflicting personality? You think that somehow it escaped me? I didn't see what, why didn't you come to me? I could have helped you. See, this is what the whole point of Torah is. Torah is our guide. It will help us. There's no other remedy. I mean, literally Torah and, and Torah in the, in, you know, you can't understand. Torah is Yeshua, is, is Mashiach. And Mashiach is the Torah is the letters they're, they're the same thing but, but looking at it from oh gosh all right let me just try to get this out so what we have to understand is these 70 rulers and the Bible's always talking about 70 rulers the 70 nations the gods of the nations again another deep mystery but Israel is always being tempted this is the point to sin to mix their seed with the seeds of the nations all right and other than calling it Homo, what would be the word? I think there's a word. You know, I want to say, like homophobic. Oh, there's a word. I can't remember. But you know, like phobic. They're not xenophobic. I think that's what it is. They're not xenophobic. They have a deep understanding of first of all, they have a job and responsibility to keep an unmingled bloodline for up to a relief beside to come through, and they take it very seriously. And um, that's how real uh the whole battle is okay today we are just we are like the most sexually immoral people we have no more shame we're just like we we and, and people wonder why our generations are getting worse and worse than our kids and i'll tell you <laughs> the millennials today are probably 
their kids, in my opinion, if we don't have revival in our nation, they're the last generation. There will be no more light. There will be no knowledge of Yahweh. These kids, it just, you know, except there'll be like a really tiny remnant, like Elijah was saying, you know. Uh, they're so, the light of life, the, 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 the behaviors that will bring holy souls guaranteed into the world, <laughs> that, that narrow margin of behavior, so to speak, is getting so narrow. Now, the thing is, this is the thing. This is why, you know, all of us came in. This is the point. He says, like, you know, we all came in through the lust of the flesh. Or how does it say? Um, he didn't come in through the, you know, because most, most people are coupled and born through the, the activation, we'll call it, of the, well, of the beast nature, right? You know, in, oh, I don't know. It's so, I, I'm sorry, people. I'm, I'm kind of at a loss because I feel like there's so much backdrop. It's such a foreign concept to fall on people's ears today, but it's so necessary to understand because if we don't get a handle on our uh, mores today, we are toast. And, and it, it's, it's like a formula. It, 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 it has nothing to do. This is how the system works. The universe is wired to spit back. If it gets junk, it's going to spit out junk. I don't know. How, all right. I, I, it's very hard. I don't know if you can just take it on simple value that you reap what you sow. If you sow good seed and you give it good water and good light and goodness, it's going to produce in a beautiful plant and it's going to produce generationally taking care of things. I mean, these are not, these should not be such foreign concepts to us. All right. But one of the things of Yeshua that is, in, well, let me tell you about you. So, because one of it's more, uh, code words is the sign of the covenant, and this is the whole concept. It is the phallus in, in human, in the Kabbalistic Adam Cademan, the body, it's always microcosm to macrocosm because the light this is a, the light of life, the, the part of the nephish soul and the other soul levels are coming down into that new life through the male energy the male light, and it has to, this is the whole point. See, this is, you know, light that just goes on to ever doesn't have anything to catch it. I mean, what's the point? You're not going to produce anything. I mean, it's got to, something's got to catch that light and have, have something to contribute to it. This is the whole point, to make something, right? So that's where the earth comes in. She is the mother. She is, this is where the, we have a whole other side, the, the physicalities, the organicness, the, the, the field, all this stuff in which to put that light and then that light. And we know that there are nutrients in the earth that we don't even have a faintest clue about really at this point still that goes into that the woman could to create this incredibly complex, but it has blood. It has nephish blood, which means it has light. It couldn't develop. See, these people don't understand me. That fetus cannot develop. It has to have two. It has to have the light and it has to have the ground, so to speak. All right. It has to have the raw material and it has to have the life force code in it. So it, it has to go together and that produces. All right. Um, and you can see that at this level, there is because we live at this point, you know, everybody looks the same. It's so creepy. I don't know how to sometimes wrap my mind around it. Everybody looks the same, so to speak, but not everybody is the same. This is what our Bible tells us. Not everybody is the same on the inside, all right? The only way we can really tell, again, is by the fruit. So the, the Ark of the Covenant, one level, is the, is the male phallus because this is um, the male energy that, that, and this is why, and there's so many in the stories where the, 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 the male energy seed life light in Adam was at the highest. I mean, that has got the biggest download, you know, and, and that's, that's, oh my gosh, why that light is so sought after. Oh, it gets really deep. And there's a whole, whole spin off subject we could do. But I just needed you people to understand that when the Bible is talking about, uh, the sign of circumcision or the sign of the covenant and uh, that they're not to put, they're not to insert their sign into foreign soil. Okay. 
Now this gets into the whole history of the earth and where, you know, what was going on with the Gentiles and, and, and Israel and what explaining a lot of this stuff. But let me go back to the Testament of Levi in the preacher because yeah, we know he had a plan. This is the whole point. He's got a plan, you know, and um, if you stick with the plan, you'll be okay. But he says here in verse 24, uh, and there shall none precede him for all generations forever. And it is talking about the, the messianic Messiah, a Messiah ben Joseph, all right? Because the archetype, I would say, Joseph, you look at him, why he's such an important archetype of Yesod. He is the patriarch, or he is the biblical patriarch shepherd over Yesod. Because the whole point with, he was, with Joseph is he was able to control his sexual um, input and output, that he, especially under the story of Potiphar's wife. And if you read the story, she used all the arts of, um, you know, arts of seduction and arts of witchcraft and arts, different things to try to trip up Joseph. Okay. But he was, so his, this is the point. There is, you can, all right. So we have an archetype, you know, here's Joseph, this kid in foreign land without any family support, so to speak, sold off by his brothers, having to live a, a hidden life. You know, he's not going to tell anybody that he's really the son of a prince, a very, he is a very, uh, so, and yet he maintains his integrity. He maintains his core character and the values from his father. And he manages to, uh, his storyline to be elevated because that's what it says. Torah will elevate you what the text says and Joseph is a perfect example and he was um and he's a perfect example of Messiah ben Joseph amongst the Gentiles all right so that we have no excuse all right um as children of Abraham to still live in one of the Noahide laws is to avoid sexual immorality same thing in the Dead Sea Scroll not in the in the um it's highly big in the Dodachi, and it's also really big in the in the book of Acts. You know, flee sexual immorality is one of the things that the at the Jerusalem Council, those Nazareans, this is the point, James and John, this whole group of scene, they were the Nazareans who were keeping the they had the deepest understanding and used the, the correctly the archetypes to explain what was going on. But when you get to leave it, he said, in his priesthood, the Gentiles shall be multiplied in knowledge upon the earth and enlightened through the grace of Adonai. In his priesthood, sin shall come to an end and the lawless shall cease to do evil. This is part of the story that Messiah ben Joseph ushers in a time of bringing this, the, the, the Gentiles into, into covenant relationship with Yahweh Elohim and um and he shall open the gates of paradise and he shall remove the threatening sword against adam and he shall give to the saints to eat from the tree of life and the spirit of holiness shall be upon them and these are messy my press he is going to defeat and if you really got to know if he's going to defeat the leviathan which is the left side yes so carnal passion instincts and it's just it's it, it is the probably most ingrained and strong negative energy almost floating through the blood of mankind it really is it's a difficult one to get a grip on and this is why it's so important you know the society needs to reinforce if the foundation gets lost the nation tanks this is what i mean if our foundations of what we consider to be behavior that will bring blessing from yahweh if we get if we lose that if we then we <laughs> It's not, it's not rocket science. You reap what you sow. The system will give you what you give it. It'll spit it back to you in one way or another. So this, the priesthood, this is why it's so important and why even they would say the priesthood is a higher level of Mashiachness, I guess you could say, than, than, king, than, than the, the inheriting the kingdom. By the time you inherit the kingdom, all of these the 70 nations are going to be subdued. And I will tell you a little secret, and it just blew me away. Those 70 nations has nothing to do with literally 70 nations out there. Don't even try to find ethnically 70 nations. It's not being used on that level at all. <laughs> I'll get there. The 70 negative energies or roots that we war against, all right? It, so 
Beliel shall be bound by him, by the priesthood, by the Mashiach. He will be bound. And this is, and he shall give power to his children to tread upon the evil spirits. This is exactly what Mashiach, this is what's in our New Testament. How, you know, he, um, greater are the works that we can do than, or um, greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. There is a power unleashed through faith, but <laughs> the only activating key you have through faith in which you can triumph over these energies, these 70 energies, and believe me. And the Lord shall rejoice in his children and be well pleased in his beloved ones forever. See, so there is a time coming, the process, but we have to, part of our thing today, and this is the last revival, we have really got to call upon the name of the Lord and forsake these wicked root systems that are in all of us. We really do. That's why the, the 144 elect in the last days, and, the, and you know, they will be pure. They will be, they will be virgins. And they will be people who have gotten control of this, of these energies and have elevated their consciousness to such an extent that they are kind of above and can operate above all the powers, the lower level powers or, that come through the fallen angels and all the things that they've taught man. Because we're always warring against, remember, fallen angels, demons, and wicked men. They kind of, and he, the other thing I just read, which really makes sense now again, too, because it talks about, you know, they talk about everything has meaning. When, when, the, when Jacob and the 12 tribes go down into Egypt, and there's a big thing about it, they, they count the souls of Israel. It's tw the 70 souls. Remember, it's all oh, that soul. 70 souls going to Israel. So like, w w what's the significance of that? Because it really comes down to, we, and there's 72, and then there's another little hidden number of 72. So you got 70 and 72, what do the two stand for? You know, it's all very cut. It's interesting. But uh, the 70 souls represent righteous souls, the, the souls of Yahweh, who would indeed, and it's always them versus the 70 energies of the nation. So it's, in other words, it's a way of saying, and, and Michael, the archangel who is over Israel, who is this, you know, you got seven, and Lucifer. So you got two major generals, so to speak, over their armies, 72, you got 70 souls on the of holy seed, and you got 70, you know, of the of the energies of okay, unholy. You could probably all right, and they're in battle with each other. It's just another way of saying it. <laughs> okay. Um now, so a couple of these concepts of Yasod is let me just see that I kind of got is this idea that. And it's even larger. I mean, I'm I'm focusing on the sexual immorality because basically that is one of our, and and this is why so much stuff makes sense. But the flip side, look at Yahweh has provisions. The blood of Yeshua. There's two there's two sides to a coin. Is one is you need to come to conviction of sin. You need to get the truth. You need to get the light turned on. You need to understand what you're engaged in. You need to understand the ramifications and so, and then you need to make a choice. This is what it says. Did I choose you this day? What are you going to do with the information I gave you? Okay, you choose you this day. You're going to be a son of light or you're going to be a son of darkness. And on either way, you're going to be helped. You want to stay with the dark side? Satan is more than willing to help you all you want. All right. Flip side, Yahweh can help you all you need and want and have the victory. So it, 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 we, you know, we are kind of without excuse, but in our nation today, the reason why, like, there's so much gender confusion. I mean, we're getting to the point where our, our yesod emanated energies into the world, they're totally confused. People don't even know if they're male or female anymore. I mean, this is not happening out of nowhere, people. This is, these are real ramifications and curses then how sad that you could start producing children who who don't want to be the sex they're born in who don't know what they are who don't want to honor it i mean talk about raising worthless children i'm sorry who i won't say worthless in the sense because no soul is worthless or unredeemable but we will say majorly confused and definitely not profitable in so ways so we're going to keep, I'm probably going to do another one on this. I did want to uh, just touch on a couple of these things as we ramp, ramp up to the concept of, of, um, uh, 
of Yesod, okay? Because this one is the one I believe, let me just say, reason I'm, because I'm coming to the absolute conclusion that good Midos, if you want to be part of the 140 over 1,000 that will get a total empowerment and a resurrection, <laughs> you need to put into it this uh, uh, good Midos. Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So, I, I mean, I'm preaching against cheap grace. You know, you can do anything you want. <clears throat> the Father's going to forgive me. No, willful sin will not profit you. Willful sin will not profit you. Now, is Yahweh good? And does he give you time to repent? Does he help you? I mean, all of this stuff. Like I said, I'm not a pastor and I'm not preaching halakha. I'm giving you some of the deeper understandings of why these things are so important and what is at stake. So on that note, shalom, and um, hold on a second, and I will see you again.